Oh, good evening and welcome to the preview for Sha Tin. Uh, it's a good card from a racing point of view for future. Uh, there's a TT, sorry, a six up. No, it's a TT jackpot, which we're ruled out of anyway because of unraced. There's a very small jackpot on the DT on races four, five, but again, race five rules us out of everything there. Um, it's a meeting of some pretty decent horses. There's three group twos. There's some good quality horses running around here. The problem with this meeting is there's very, very little depth in the races. There's two or three or four horses in the market in each race. They are going to fight out the finish in just about every race. Um, maybe race two doesn't fit that category because it's a class five of eels and uh, always a chance of a boil over there, especially when you go through their form and see hardly any of them can run a place. So there's a very good chance something funny might happen there. Race one on race, so we're not interested there. Race two, um, got humongous on top. Now, this has been a bit of a bugbear for us, this horse, over the last two seasons. It's cost us a lot of money with uh, getting uh, missing a place in two photo finishes last season. Cost us nine million one time and about six million the other time. Uh, it owes us. Um, it's finally dropped into a race it can actually win. And uh, with only 55 kilos, Long's riding okay. Um, it's got the best credentials over this trip, um, better than most of these. So at 20 or 25 to 1, that'll probably be that price. I'm happy to uh, be anchoring it and having a bit of a go in this race. I think there's a chance in a race like this. Got number nine, Bullish Power, I'll probably get to the front. Uh, if they leave it alone, it might be able to hang into there and, and run somewhere. <clears throat> Sean Tilly. Now, it needs a lot going its way. The 51 kilos is a help. Barrier 13 won't make any difference. It goes back to last every run anyway. Um, but it needs a bit of speed in the race. Uh, hopefully, it'll get it here with a couple of horses here that can go show a bit of early toe, open up the field a little bit. Um, the favourite is Dark Secret with Douglas White on it. Now, this is 14 starts at the track for no wins. Uh, that's your favourite. The second favourite is uh, Spicy Siam. It's 24 starts for one win. So, hence my thoughts that there's a bit of value in a race like this with weakish type favourites, especially they haven't had a run for five weeks as well, and their track works mediocre at best. Uh, I've got eight on top, humongous, from nine bullish power, 14 Chantilly, chances to seven rain thunder, 13 starlit warrior, three man and ming, um, that looks the race. Race three is unraced, so we pass that. We go to race four. Number nine, wonderful moments. Interesting horse. Hasn't had a run for close to a year. Had two really soft trials. It's cherry ripe. Looks primed to go fresh. Um, it'll be hard to beat. Won't be any fancy price, I wouldn't think, in this race. But it's the one to beat. Art of success and ultimate winners. Look, the main two dangers from reasonable draws. Um, Roman legend, ran a couple of good races up the straight, not sure about the uh, 1200 with it. Uh, genuine champion, now this is trialled uh, really nice, rode it up early in the race and then grabbed it mid-race and eased it down late. Um, this could be one at a bit of a price that needs to go in. Of the rest, Jolly Spring Dragon Fighter, uh, nine on top, looks better than these. From 11, 5, 8, 7, 13, and 3. Uh, race 5, we passed. There's a few unraced in there. We go to race 6, which is the start of the 6 up. Now, I did contemplate playing the 6 up, but as I went through each leg, I just couldn't find any value. We were basically only going to be putting in the first 3 or 4 in the betting in each race. You can't get a result betting like that in Hong Kong. Um, you know, we're not we're not worried about missing a, a six up that pays thirty or forty thousand or in this case I, I think I'd be struggling to get anywhere near that dividend. So the six up looks uh, a no go because of the, the lack of depth in the races. This race to me looks a race in four. Um Kaya, this is being set for the derbies. Um if that's their aspirations, it should beat these easy. 
his trial was easy. Never let it go at any stage. Had a lap full of horse. Uh, should be too good for these. Won't be any price. The danger is Kismet. It's had two really good runs. It's ready to win now. And uh, its track work's been really good. Ran and sprinted up 22 and a half the other morning. That's good enough. Of the rest, Thanksgiving, Dashing Super and Winham. They look the only other ones that could possibly run a place. But it's a race that does, doesn't have any depth. Go to race seven. Same thing happens here. Quality horses. But uh, most of these haven't got a winning chance. Akeed Mafid. Now, this has been a little bit... Um, I won't say it was dead in its runs, but he sent it to the track unfit. That's, I don't think there's much doubt about that. And uh, he's him lifted its track work and he's put the blinkers on it. And uh, he trialled it the other day and it bolted him. This is ready to win now. Barrier 11, no favours, but he'll probably sit out wide. He's done it with this horse before. This is its go, 2,000 metres. It'll be cherry ripe for this. The only two that can possibly beat it are one, a military attack, and two, California memory. They are the other two class gallopers in the race. The rest looked outclassed. Um, so it's, again, we're in the same boat as in the first leg. It's just a race devoid of any depth. Uh, four on top from one and two. Don't give anything else a winning chance. Race eight, same scenario here. Small field, only nine runners. Uh, goal Fund's beaten all these easy. First two runs back from a spell. Track work's been really good since. Uh, it should win again. The only two legitimate dangers to it are blazing speed. If you can get out in front and bludge and nothing takes it on, and there doesn't appear to be a lot of speed in this race, so he should get... He should get a soft run from, from the inside draw. The only other one that's got any hope is real specialist for me. I think the winner's in those three, although I think Golf Hunt will probably win, and it'll be short. Uh, two from eight and six. Race nine, good race, the sprint. Um, Sterling City was impressive winning first up. This is no harder. It's the one to beat. It'll be favourite and no value, but it's going to be hard to beat. The dangers are three, Frederick Engels. Eight, Charles the Great. They look the only other two winning chances. Amber Sky was impressive winning first up, 1,000 metres. Um, I think it's a little bit suspect at 1,200 and certainly against this quality of horse. Um, so I think at the early markets, it was around three to one, seven to two. That's way under the odds. Um, so Reese Cherry, now it won well um, earlier in the season and he's freshened it up. His track work's been good. Um, but the barrier sort of negates a lot of the advantages that it had. And time after time was a nice trial. It could run into the placings here for the new trainer. But four on top from three and eight, place chances to six and, uh, sorry, to five, six and two. Uh, race 10, another race, same as the previous legs, only four winning chances. Four glorious Sunday, three Berlinski. Eight principal, which was nice and hot in the trial, and five fabulous November. They look the only four winning chances. They look classes above the rest of these. So they're the ones to beat. Again, they'll be the first four in the market and no value. And the last race, again, a good set of runners here, good quality horses. Um, sea Dragons had five starts for five wins. Now, it's drawn bad with 60 kilos, but when I went back through its form, First three runs last season, uh, it drew bad all three, sat three wide, four wide, most of them, and was still too good. This is a, a little bit harder here, but this is a quality galloper. It was ridden nice and quiet in a trial. It's ready to go. Uh, my favourite, it's another one. Got the advantage of a better draw and six kilos in the pool. Um, got a lot of ability, this. This hard to beat. Smart man will improve for the first up run. And super jockey. Um, rode it too close last time from barrier 10. It'll go back and uh, it'll be uh, running on strongly late. Looks for winning chances. Seven on top, one, 12, 14. Only other ones that can possibly run in the money would probably be two, four, and three. Um, so as you can see, it's a race devoid of a lot of opportunity to get value. You're basically looking at runners in the market only. That's not our go betting in races like that where we're anchoring favourites. 
I don't mind doing it in one or two legs in a six up. I don't want to do it in six legs of a six up. So I think we'll pass the, uh, certainly that. Uh, we'll have a much, much closer look at race two with Humongous and see if we can get something out of that race. I think there's a flukish chance to get a result there. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, for those that were involved in uh, Spring Attack today, uh, Caulfield played nice and uh, funny on speed. No hope coming from anywhere else. So um, we were knocked out very early and Ascot again knocked out in a photo finish as I sort of indicated in the in the review, that luck has haunted us now for about 15 months and it's still going every time we get into a position to get a result. Um, if it's a photo finish, it's going against us. Part and parcel of the game. It's not the first time this happened, won't be the last. Um, we'll bounce back. We'll just keep doing what we're doing and uh, one day the photos are all going to go our way and that'll be a different story. Uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, good luck if you play tomorrow. As I say, we'll only probably consider race two as a betting option and uh, sit back and enjoy the rest of the day and watch the races and uh, watch all the favourites sail home.